Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This time we're gonna tackle the GT500 that was revealed earlier this year at the Detroit Auto Show. So the second I saw it, I knew something was off about the design. I couldn't put my finger on what it was, but it kinda, it looked too simple and too body kitty, if that's a word. Kinda like a body kit that some aftermarket company put on the regular GT. I'm gonna show you the issues that I have with the GT500 and how we can solve them. I'm gonna redesign the GT500 specifically as I want it to be. More importantly I'm gonna let you know why I want it to be like that because redesigning something is easy you can just throw some lines up there everything has to have a reason and I'm gonna tell you all those reasons behind this design that we're gonna do right now Before we get started sketching on the GT500 I want to do this quick form study to show you why car design is so different from any other type of design what does dynamic mean? To me, the dynamic in car design terms means motion, or if we take it one step further, emotion. Car design is special because we have to take into account that often when we buy cars, we buy them based on feeling. Not only how you feel about the way the car looks, but also how the car itself looks. What feeling does it express? There is a reason we refer to the front of the car as the face of the car. Emotions are never static, they're always in constant movement, and this has to be reflected in the design as well. I made these three form studies to visualize this, and we're gonna tie this into the GT500 design later on in the video. We could say that the top form is clinical, static, very little emotion, kind of boring, Parallel lines never result in anything good in design. We know what both lines will look like and act like when stretched out in indefinitely. They will always be at the same distance from each other. Might be functional in some designs, but it leaves nothing for the imagination. Now if we go to the second form, it gets a little bit more exciting. This form tells us that these two lines will eventually intersect if we were to extend them, which triggers the imagination as to what the shape would look like. And then finally, the third shape kind of takes on a life of its own compared to the first two. It dances all over the place, and if this was a detail on an object or a car, the light and shade would transform into endless varieties. And this is interesting. So if a car is supposed to express a feeling or emotion, the design has to be in line with that. The GT500 is an aggressive muscle car. We want to express power and strength. This is where I think the GT500 falls a little bit short. There are too many parallel lines in the design which makes it static from a design standpoint. And that's what we're gonna change in this video with just a few minor tweaks and touches. If I were to ask you which of these three designs or shapes or forms do you think feel more dynamic and emotional, it's obviously number three. And this philosophy is what we're gonna take into account now that we're gonna redesign the GT500. All right, so let's jump into the fun stuff here. This is the GT500, obviously, the front view. And there are a few uh, issues that I have with it uh, right away. And the most prominent one is the uh, amount of parallel parallelity or parallel lines that we have going on everywhere. I kind of want to make a few more curves. I want to have some... I like the straight lines of the, of the design. I do like the straightness because it builds up strength in the design. It looks like it's uh, it's a kind of uh, whole, a monument that's holding something up, like columns in a cathedral. It builds strength, but at the same time, we can have some curves playing with the straight lines just to get it some more dynamics in there. And this is based on the form study that I just showed you in the beginning. When we do this, everything just becomes more interesting. The chamfers on this front end are too weak. They're too narrow so i'm gonna add thickness to them i'm gonna do the same thing in the grill later on we want to build up the face we want to make it more muscular and we do that by adding this thickness to various part of the front end and here i'm just breaking up this big block of it look if if you look at it from straight ahead it's just a rectangle underneath the headlight so why not make that a little bit more interesting by breaking it up so we have two different surfaces facing two different ways. The top surface of this rectangle now is facing forward, which gives it a lighter shade. Then we have the lower part of it, which faced downwards, it's gonna give a darker blue shade or whatever color the car is. 
So I was talking about these uh, straight lines and they are totally fine with me. They look like pillars that hold something up and uh, that uh, resembles strength, but we can make them thicker. I think they're too thin and I want to make them bulkier and that's what I'm doing right now. And I think it looks a lot better this way and gives the car more character and more strength than it had before. I'm filling in here and doing the exact same thing on the other side because of course we want the front end to be symmetrical. And if you're wondering what software this is, this is Photoshop and I'm using a Wacom or Wacom. I've never understood how to pronounce it correctly because no matter how I say it, there was always going to be someone say, hey, you, you, you pronounce it wrong. This is supposed to be Wacom or Wacom. Anyway, it's a sketching tablet that you can just sketch, plug into the computer and you have some fun in Photoshop just like we're doing right here. So right now I'm adding the uh, symmetry that I was talking about earlier just to make it look the same on both sides. And I also want to go in and add some highlights to this to make it look like it's actually part of the car. And I do that by just adding some white touches to whatever surfaces is actually are actually hitting the light source that we have. So wherever the light is coming from, whatever edges and surfaces are facing that way, they obviously will need some sort of highlight. If we don't do that, the uh, adjustments that we're making are going to look flat and they're going to look like they're not actually part of the original image that we're using. I'm going to add some final touches to the lower part of this uh, front here, the rubbery part. If it's rubber, we can't have strong highlights, obviously, because it's not as reflective as, for example, a clear coat. So I'm just using a little bit of light gray to adjust that highlight. And since the uh, added thickness to this design covered the GT500 logo in the in the front there, I just wanted to move that a little bit to the left. Another thing I wanted to add was some sharpness to the hood of this design. I want it to be more sharp than the regular GT or Mustang. So I'm adding some sharp edges to the outside of this hood going down to this corner of the grill. And I think that also adds to the uh, strength and boldness of the design. It makes it stand out in the Mustang lineup even more. So that's about it for this design. I'm gonna add some final shadings and touches and highlights and stuff like that to this design right now. And I'm gonna merge all the layers to show you the before and after here. So this is after, obviously this is before, after, before, after. <laughs> I think you can get the point. But the point here was to build up the front of this car and make it kind of keep the design as it is, but make it more beefy and more muscular. That was the whole point of this redesign of the GT500. And I really think we accomplished that. What do you think? Comment below and let me know. And now I'm just gonna have some fun by turning the lights on because hey, it just looks a lot cooler when they're on. So why not put that when we're in Photoshop already? There we go, the lights are on and it looks very, very evil and beastly, which is exactly what I wanted with this design. And this is the before and after, obviously. I'm gonna show you real quick the uh, changes that we did by sketching them out for you so you have a better overview of what exactly went down here. It's always a lot easier for me to just sketch it out and show you this way instead of just talking about it. So first of all, we wanted to add some thickness to the overall shapes and make them wider and thicker. And that's what we did, as you can see down below. So we used all these shape, all these uh, elements to just redesign them and make them more beefy. Add some sharpness to the hood because we wanted to stand out more from the rest and the uh, the boring normal old, old rental Mustangs. This needs to stand out as much as possible. 
and the final result is down there as you can see so there we go that's the redesign of the gt500 i hope you liked it just as much as i enjoyed making it and if you did like it hit the like button if you dislike this design hit the dislike button if you're new to the channel welcome first of all feel free to browse the channel i have a lot of these redesigns and also sketching tutorials that you might enjoy and if you like what you see just hit the subscribe button that's about it for this time thank you so much for watching i'm the sketch monkey and i will see you in the next one take it easy guys